So we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 9. And we studied last night. You need to get it. We looked at the mark of Jehovah. And we looked at the mark of the Antichrist. The beast. And if you never heard of the mark of Jehovah, you need to get last week's lesson in Ezekiel 9. Which we're going to pick up where we got and go back to Ezekiel 9 1. You can't just say, you see, you keep, people say the Old Testament is boring, but I love the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation ties in with many, if not all, the Old Testament books. He cried also in ears with a loud voice. Again, we talked about the loud voice everything last night. And caused them that had charge over the city to draw near. So these, God would have the people that are in over the elders, the people of authority. In your town or city, it would be the mayor and probably, you know, the chief of police, the chief of the fire department. And those physical leaders, the board of aldermen's and all that. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Well, that's kind of interesting. That destroying weapon would be they're carrying a sword, a bow and arrow, a spear. Whatever they have been trained to use. And the charge of the city now would be military. Today, that would be probably the National Guard, the army. And behold, six men, interesting six, all the numbers that God had chosen, that came from the way the higher gate were at the temple. This lies in with Ezekiel chapter 8. You got to go get the video, you got to listen to the video. Toward the north. Remember the women weeping for Tammuz is in the north, and the people worshiping Baal at the sunrise service, the Baptists and the Catholics together. You know, and the, the great, I can't say the word, it starts with the knee. Everybody, ecumenical unit. We, back in Norris, Connecticut, they would have the ecumenical movement on the green. We would be there, not part of it. We'd be there preaching against them all. And I had one woman, well, come and join us. Absolutely not. No way. I hit a button on my computer. That's what that was about. You got an ecumenical unit of Tamus and Baal. But they are one together. You just need Esther. Every slaughter weapon in their hand. One man among them. I don't know if he would be of the six or a seven. Then was clothed with linen. That, that man could be possibly an angel. We ran that reference in Revelation. Angels are men, and they don't have wings. Whereby we entertain angels unaware. So, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, if that goes on my life. He didn't have big old wings. And there are some people that came in my life, and I wonder. There have been, uh, they don't have wings. With a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood be beside the brazen altar. That's where all the offerings, they have entered the, the tabernacle. You would go east to west from the entrance of the veil with the brazen altar. The, 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 uh, the, the, I can't think, uh, the, uh, the brazen, um, the wash, labor. And he would enter the veil to the holy place. And then you would enter into the veil to the most holy. That goes from east to west. Well, if you were to be there on the north side, the women's going, ah, he's dead. Ah. 
And on the east side, they'll be against the temple. He's risen! Get the Sunday lotion. They're in the they're in the court court room courthouse court area of the temple. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I'd like to welcome everyone to the house of the Lord. Uh, yeah, that's right. You got women weeping for Tammuz this part of the year, and you got people sunrise service to bail on the other part of the year. And you got the birthday to Tammuz this year, and you got the S star the other part of the year, and you're worshiping dead men another part of the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is everything that's been going on in the temple. That Jeremiah's preached again, Ezekiel's preaching against. And Ahab is brought in his own altar. When I said the brazen labor, I don't even, the labor has been taken off the, 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 the oxen or the lions. I forget which one Solomon built. He built, he built 12 oxen or 12 lions that held the labor and Ahab removed it. You know, there were times they, when they wanted gold, they would strip the gold off the doors of the temple. The glory of the God of Israel was going up from the cherub. This is that thing that Ezekiel seen, chapter one. You got to get that study. It's so boring. Well, Bible says study. I've said to many men, I wonder, and they chuckle. I wonder when we finally get to heaven, God don't sit us down. And gives us a test. You know, I've been through 12 years of the public school system. I'm going in my third year of college. And every time they're going to say we're going to have a test, my teachers, my instructors will say, I want you to study. God says, study. Wouldn't be interested if part of the rewards, the, the wood, hay, and stubble, no rewards, the gold, silver, precious. Wouldn't it be funny if God would sit us down and say, okay, here's the test. I don't know. Whereas he was to the threshold of the house, and he called to the man clothed with the linen. Which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And that, that, that's throughout the book of Revelation. Talking to the angel. Angels. And the Lord said unto him. While well, Ezekiel's witnessing this whole thing. As John witnessed the whole thing. Revelation is in Ezekiel. Ezekiel's in Revelation. Nothing new under the sun. No wise man in the Bible said. How can you say you, you, you love Revelation, but you can't stand the Old Testament? And when you look at the Old Testament, it's... You realize when Peter, James, John, and Paul, and Jesus went about preaching, you know they did not have the New Testament to preach from? Guess what they preached when they preached? The Old Testament. I gotta say that because I'm sick and tired of hearing this. I don't like the Old Testament. I don't read my Bible. I don't have. You know, there's nothing more that makes me more angry. It's when you go to a church and you don't even see someone bring their Bible. What makes me even more angry when you get out of the church service, they're, they're, they're driving away from the church, and you see their Bible go flying across the road. I've seen that three times. And I've talked to other Christians, and they've seen it. It's not just me. Go through the midst of the city. Jerusalem. Through the midst of Jerusalem. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations done in the midst. What's, what, what's that? You know, Pastor, you and your congregation, you are sinning against God. You got to get rid of Tamu's birthday. You got to get rid of Esther's celebration. Oh, no, these are the true church celebrations throughout the year. 
Oh, Lord God, will you help them? Lord God, you get them to the truth. Lord God, will you have them listen? And God will say, put a, put a mark on his forehead. Put my name on his forehead. Because he's sighing, he's crying, he's trying to teach the truth. When you preach the truth to a bunch of liars in the church, to a bunch of liars in the city, well, I'm good. I got my religion. That's not what Jesus would do. You're turning the, pay, the, the people away. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark the one who's preaching the gospel. And all those who are praying for people to get right and are praying for the gospel to get out, they may not be preaching the street. They may be knocking on doors. They may be opening a Bible to somebody. They may be leaving gospel tracts. Mark their foreheads. With the name of Jehovah. Everybody else, we're going to keep our Christmas. We're going to keep our, I'm not going to open my Bible. Oh, I got a modern Bible. Oh, I want to do this. I want to say, don't mark them. Now, we're going to see a slaughter here. When our time in the church age for those that don't want to do what God tells them to do, when the trunk blows, they're going to stay. And those Christians that, that don't want to do what God tells them, they're going to go up in the rapture, they're going to go before the judgment seat of Christ, and they're coming away empty and bald-headed. And they're going to look at the Christians that they harassed, and the Christians that they yelled at, and the Christians they didn't like, and the Christians they told to get out of their church, and they're going to look, look at all the crowns he got. They ain't he getting all the crowns. When I was when I was in the baseball team, we all got trophies. I said another thing to probably get people mad. What about the people, all the Christians, for the Christians that do get rewards and do get crowns, do get inheritance? What about all the Christians been against them, the, the Christians didn't want to have anything to do with them? The Christians who, who fought those Christians. What if they who don't get inheritance, don't get reward? All right. You see that man that was in your church you kicked out? Yep. He's got a city. Oh, uh, you are going to be under that man and in that city. That's Christians in charge of you. And when the Lord turned to that Christian, you tell those people, you continue to teach those people like you did before the truth. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the people that sigh and cry for the abominations that are being done in the midst. What's an abomination? What have we seen so far? Weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz is a sun god and that you worship the sun god on his birthday, December 25th, because all sun gods are born December 25th. The son of God was not born December 25th. Another abomination that we saw in chapter 9, the men were having a sunrise service. That's an abomination. Okay, so we move on. Verse 5. I'm trying to get my screen to move here. Something's happening, I don't want to move. To the others, he said, in my hearing, Ezekiel said, this is what I heard. Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not thy air I spare, neither have ye pity. All right, send that man to Hezdin Corn. He's marking the foreheads. You guys go after him. Now watch this. Slay utterly old and young. Both me and what about the little children? And women. God's is so cruel. He kills the little children. All right. Two places. Revelation. I like Revelation. Revelation 13, I hope. 16. I hope it's 13. All right.
Verse 14, we'll start. And they see them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. This is the beast, which had power to do in the sight of the beast. The Antichrist. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. The Antichrist. Which had wounded by a sword. Oh, 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 a sword? He's killed. And then he comes back to life. Tamuz! Tamuz! The Antichrist dies. And he comes, watch, verse 12. And they exercise power over the first beast before him and cause the earth that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Resurrection of the Antichrist. Oh, let's have a merry Antichrist Mass. You don't want me to show you in the Bible where they made Mary and gave out gifts at the death of Moses and Elijah. See, that's why people hate me, because I take your holidays and ruin them. I kick Santa Claus, I pull Santa Claus' pants down, and I kick him in the boogie. I go up to the Easter Bunny and say, oh, what's those little black jelly beans after I kick him in the butt? Verse 16, and he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand and their forehead. That they might not buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. There's the mark of the beast. And those people that get the mark of the beast are going to get the wrath of God. I don't care if you're a child. I don't care if you're a woman. I don't care if you're if you're colored. I don't care if, if you're minority. I don't care if you're a Republican. If you receive that mark, you're going to get the wrath of God. Study Revelation. Okay? Now Ezekiel said, the little children. How God is going to kill the little children. God is so mean. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 7. Phew, I thought he was going to say chapter 10. Jeremiah 7, 18. This is why Jeremiah through God, or God through Jeremiah, and God through e Ezekiel, I want you to kill the little children. This is why. The children gather the wood. The fathers need kindle the fire. And the women need their doughs and make cakes to the queen of heaven. There's Esther. And pour out drink offerings unto other gods. And they may promote me to anger. So you see, Jeremiah and Ezekiel tell you why God said, Get, kill the little children. They're got, okay, Mom, I'll get the wood for the for Queen of Heaven. I'll go out and take Mary in the half shell, and I'll clean her up, make sure she's all clean, because she can't clean herself. I'll go to church, and I'll put a quarter in. I don't know what it costs today, but I'll burn a candle for a dead person. And I'll go up there, I'll take that little round disc in the name of Baal, and I'll take this to the sun god, where all the saints of the Catholic Church have the sun glow around their head. You know, Baptists have that. Preachers have got that sun glow, glow around their head. I am the leader of this church. You do what I tell you to do. I had a preacher, I had a pastor one time in a church. If you don't do what I tell you to do, and you don't like it, you go to my church accountant, which who I knew, and you tell him you want all your money back, and then you leave our church. This pastor also stood up one time. It was Christmas time. Bail mess. I want to tell you right now, and this is what, I was a witness, and my wife Lisa was a witness. I enjoy getting Christmas cards from all you in the church. But if you dare get those little box of Christmas cards, you know, get a pack of 10 or 25, don't you dare send me one of those cards. You go out and you buy me a personal 
You spent over a buck twenty-five for me for a Christmas card, or don't give me a Christmas card at all. You can ask my wife. Well, you can't ask me. I'm going on bunny trail today. The reason why God said the little children, because the little children are worshiping the Queen of Heaven. Let's go to Exodus. I'm trying to go to Exodus 20. 20. I taught you this before. Nothing new under the sun. And we'll, we'll get to the bare foundation of 20, verse 3. I have no other gods before me. Verse 4. Raven image, likeness, okay, of anything. Verse 5, Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, serve them. I am the Lord, the jealous God. All right, look at the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. You know what that is? I'll tell you what that is. I, I know this personally. My great grandparents, pukuses, came over from Poland to America through Ellis Island to New London County. How they ever ended up there, I don't know. They taught my grandpa, my aunt, and my uncle how to be sincere, dear Catholics. And my aunt took it serious. My aunt, she was a Catholic. You go into her, her living room, and she had Jesus with his heart sticking out, scared the fire out of me. She, had, she used to have those little Catholic candies, don't eat too many of them because they make you go caca. And her house is reeked of Catholicness. My uncle, kind of Catholic, not sure how much Catholic he was. My grandpa, every Saturday, went to Catholic church. I went with him. Okay? So, great grandpa taught my grandpa, my grandpa's. My mom didn't stay in it. Came to his grandchild, me. That's what he's talking about. And little boy Stolly would go up there and he would go and put his little quarter in, buy a candle. And if he didn't go to St. Mary's, he would walk to St. Joseph, which was closer, and he would go to St. Joseph Catholic Church. And he walk up there and put a quarter in the thing there. And he'd do the holy water and all that other nonsense. And then one day, April 21st, 1987, I came to know Jesus Christ. And I left that religion. I did not bring my children up in that religion. But my great-grandpa did. My grandpa did till I got saved. And my grandpa was saved after I was saved. And did that nonsense. So... The children, when we read Jeremiah, say the children are going out getting the wood, the fathers are starting the fires, and mom is making the cakes. So when you come to Ezekiel, chapter 9, you know, God ain't just killing people just for the heck of it. You got to have scripture with scripture. You can't just jump in and, oh, I can. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah, that's in the Bible. And then Stalin comes along. Okay, you can do all things that Christ. I want you to go on top of this, on, on top of the entire Empire State Building. I want you to do the nice, lovely swan dive. And I want you to land on the street below after being hit by forty-five yellow cabs. And I want you to get up and say, "I am alive." You're taking the verse out of context. So when you say God is a mean God for killing the children, verse 6, Jeremiah told you why he killed the children. We just read why he killed the children. Mom is over there crying for Tammuz. Dad's over there worshiping the sunrise service. Those children are part of the heathen occult and not worshiping the God of Israel. Now let me tell you something. If God destroyed Judah and killed them and destroyed the temple and destroyed the city and brought back some Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo and, and Nehemiah and Ezra over into Babylon and Ezekiel into Babylon and spared Jeremiah and many were killed and many were taken captive. 
Are we not God's people as a Christians? What do you get, what is God going to do to the Christians if we are involved in this nonsense? And we'll give it to modern day today. I mean, the Baptists don't have the Queen of Heaven, but they sure have Esther. They sure have Tammuz's birthday. And they honored the dead around Veterans Day. And when I was in the church where they actually put pictures of dead soldiers. I asked the guy who put the pictures up, do you witness to them? One of them was so dear. Did you witness to him? Well, uh, 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 uh. Show me the Bible where they honored dead men. Well, Urias is mentioned among David's mighty men. He wasn't dead yet. David killed him later. You realize after Stephen died, only one time Stephen was mentioned, and this is to say that Paul was there when Stephen died. That was it. When James was killed by Herod, that's it. You didn't see his name no more. Did you? So the children... Slay utterly the old, the young, the maids, and the little children, and the women. What's going on? What did you just read in Ezekiel 8? What did you just study in Ezekiel 9? They're over there worshiping fallen gods. If there was a child that loved God the if of Israel, that child had the mark of Jehovah on his forehead and got, left him alone. Remember what we just read? If there was a mark on old, young, both maids, little children, and women, if there was a mark of Jehovah on their foreheads, they would leave them alone. If there was no mark, they were worshiping gods. Don't you go calling God cruel. I'm going to tell you, there are children that will go to hell. They have come to the knowledge of their sins. They have realized they had knowledge that they sinned against the holy God and they never got right from a young age. As much as a young child can get saved, a young child can die and go to hell. He's been brought up proper. He's been brought up in a proper church, especially in the old time uh, uh, Christianity of America with George Whitfield and all the, the, the tent camp meetings and the hellfire preaching. I guarantee there are plenty of children that died and went to hell rejecting the Savior that died for their sin, knowing full well they sinned. I guarantee you, after them preachers, when they stole the cookie from mom, they realized they not only stole the cookie from mom, but God was watching them. And they didn't repent. And they didn't get right. Oh, people are going to hate Stiley for saying that. But it's the truth. How can we can say children get saved, but we can't say children can go to hell? I had, even as a child, I honored God in a way, and I knew I was responsible to God. Had I died before April 21st, 1987, as a child, I would have gone to hell because I knew God, and I knew that there was a credibility to God. At a young age, me and Kevin would offer earthworms to God because God required a sacrifice. Where did I get that from? I never read a Bible. We would have that, and I'll tell you what we had. We would sacrifice earthworms to God. Kevin and I would lay out, and in the middle, in the middle of the night, late at night, we look at the stars, we honor the beauty of God. And the devil had us to believe that in the old abandoned tree in the backyard of our house had a witch. And we covered that, we covered that tree. We threw rocks in that tree to hide the witch. I remember a man that sinned against God and they covered him with stones. I had the knowledge of God. I, I, ha I didn't have the knowledge of the Catholic God. But I didn't have a full knowledge of God, but I knew I was accredited to him. 
These little children have sinned against God, and if they had not sinned against God, there would be a mark on their foreheads, and the uh, young, and the old, and the women. <coughs> Look, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. So these people, five or six of them, I'm not sure if that man with the ink were, is of the six, but he, the man with the ink horn went through of the city, all right, this man is of God. This man, he didn't want to sin. This man, this man, he preached against it. This child, he loved God and, and disobeyed his parents not to do. Mark him. And when these men, these five or six men came up and they saw the mark, they left that person alone no matter who he was. If there was no mark, and began at my sanctuary, began at the temple of God, and worked out. Those women that were crying for Tammuz were killed. Those that are at the sunrise service were killed. What do you think God's going to do with the Christian? Now, he ain't going to kill them, send them to, to hell. He's going to take off your crown. He's going to take off your reward. He's going to give you wood. He's going to give you hay. He's going to give you stubble. You're going to set up the ugly smoke detector. And all eternity, if we were to cast our crowns, when the elders cast their crown, you will have nothing to throw at Jesus. Because Jesus ain't going to give you a award. He ain't going to give you a trophy just because you were on the team. I got a class in, in uh, my college. Hey, everybody just, everyone's so good. How do you feel? Uh, that woman begin to hate me with how I'm writing things. Watch. So there is a mark. They are killed. If there is no mark, they're spared. Jeremiah's running around. I wonder if Ezekiel and Jeremiah ever got together. I am assuming that one of these times has happened is the Babylonian army of the one of three times that they came. It's not the third yet. They... Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. <laughs> ancient men mean what we call them elderly. <laughs> the old farts. Grandpa. Why did you begin with them? Because they ought to know better. They ought to have been teaching what was right. And I guarantee you, there was probably some ancient men that had the name they were doing right. And there were some ancient men that didn't. What do you think God's going to do with the Christian? Does not, uh, I forget how the verse goes, but shall not the judgment begin with the house of God? Before the world is judged at the great white throne judgment, Christians are judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And there will be many Christians that are going to come out of that judgment bald. They're going to wish they could have Rogaine to have something on their head. You know what happened to Samson? He lost all his power when his hair was shaved off. Study hair in the Bible. Study it. He said unto them, defile the house, the temple. What do you think God's going to do with his church? They keep saying it's the house of God. They keep on saying it's the house of God. If you mow the lawns, God will give you a reward for mowing the lawn. Defile it. I've always preached and people don't like. What if after we're gone, we're gone with the rapture and the Antichrist uses the Baptist church houses as a place that if you want to receive the mark, go down to your local Baptist church building and you can receive my mark there. Hey, preacher. We'll be up in there. Hey, preacher. Yeah. You see that beautiful church you had? Yeah. Look at it. Lining up to get the mark in it right now. Your beautiful stage where your altar is. 
your pulpit is where they lay their right hand or they even put their forehead down on that pulpit so they can get whatever the identification is. That's what they're doing with your church now. Maybe. That'd be quite interesting. What if the, I mean, the Antichrist is going to use, use the church buildings. Why not use them to defraud God? Why don't they use them against God? Come receive my mark at the Baptist churches. And then meet at the Catholic Church and we'll have service and assembly. And we'll have the cookies. And no milk, blood. Jewish blood. Jewish cookies. Revelation chapter 12. That'd be quite interesting. I'm not for the building. Matter of fact, in the book of Acts, you don't find no buildings. I don't think we should meet in a church building. I think we should meet house that. Listen, my wife sat back one time. She labored to clean a house, to set a house, because we had set our house to start a home church. We didn't get many visitors. But she set forth. She's in glory today. She'll be honored. Hey, she obeyed her husband. She obeyed God. She loved God. And she set her house apart for God. You wouldn't get some preachers today. They, you don't even know where the preachers live today. Many of them, never mind, don't even go in their house. I know a couple of churches that we went, that they had church in their house, they had a house church, and we would meet in their house on a Wednesday evening. That all stopped when they got a building. And then you got to pay for the mortgage and everything like that. Now you got to cut back on the, on the missionaries. Oh, move on. Defile the house. I'd like to welcome you to the house of the Lord. Yeah, he'll be defiled. And fill the courts with the slain. Those courts, and outside the temple, there were court, little courts. There were rooms for, for, for the animals, for grain, for the priests, offices of the priest. There was a place where they slayed the animals. And there were places where they butchered the meat and all that. And we read a place there was a courtyard for the women, for Tamus, and whatever women brag and, and gossip about. Jesus was in the courts of the, of the uh, temple. He sat by the treasury most of the time. With the slain. Go forth. They went forth and slew in the city. Those that had the mark, they didn't kill, they didn't get killed. Those with the mark in, in the tribulation period will be the wrath of God. The mark of Jehovah for the Jews is light. Never for a Christian. Those that are marked by Jehovah. In the tribulation period are the 144,000 Jewish apostles, disciples, missionaries, whatever you want to call them. They're not the Jehovah Witnesses that come knocking on your door. They're the wrong race. And they don't have anything on their forehead. The 144,000 tribulation period will have a, a name and a mark of Jehovah. The Antichrist will have a mark or a name of his... And it will be so close to the name of Jehovah or Jesus because he's the Antichrist. Some believe it's Judas. You know how close the name of Judas is to the name of Jesus? Maybe he'll be called Joshua. Joshua means Jehovah saved. Wouldn't it be interesting they have the name of Joshua written on their forehead? It's almost identical to the name of Jesus. I don't know. And they came to pass while they were slain them. I, Ezekiel was left. Then I fell on my face and cried. And you know what I picture with him doing that? The man with the ink coming coming. No, no, look, no, look, look. Before I say what I'm going to say, let me show you what I said. Uh, where is it? Look at verse 4, at the end of verse 4. Put a mark in their foreheads, the men that sigh and cry for the old abominations, right? Come down to Ezekiel. 
I was left, I fell on my face, and I cried. Imagine the man with the acorn coming up, right Jehovah across his forehead at that point. I said, oh, Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Yes. But there were people saying there was a regment. Jeremiah, I always want to say Jeremiah. Ezekiel, you remember your hair that you cut and you put a third in the fire? And a but at the point of death of the dying of his people, Ezekiel loses what he's even taught, what he's even illustrated. He's Ezekiel is marveled by how many are dying. You know what we're going to marvel when we get to, the, to heaven at the judgment seat of Christ? How many are not getting nothing? People you know and love and they, you tried to teach and their pastor taught them wrong. They had their own superstitions and their own little thoughts and ideas that were wrong. I mean, you're saved. You're going to New Jerusalem, but you're not guaranteed a reward. Then said he unto me, God speaking the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. There is a reason, there is a purpose why they are dying. What is that purpose? Solomon's already written it, and Paul will repeat it. The wages of sin is death. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The land is full of blood. That means murder. That land is going to be filled with blood by the Antichrist. He's going to slay many and many, many Jews. And they're going to drink their blood. And they're going to eat their bodies. And the land will be filled with blood. The water is going to turn to blood. Thank you, Moses. The city is full of perverseness. So is the church age of Laodicea. I read the other day a church is going to have a movie night with popcorn. And it's all being illustrated by a man that taught the church that the blood on Jesus Christ's garments when he comes back is his own blood. The city is full of perversions for they say the Lord has forsaken the earth and the Lord sees not. The Lord, listen, you know what Jeremiah is saying? You know what you're saying, Ezekiel? God's all done with us. Eat, drink, and be merry. When you start seeing the Christians have that attitude, then you know definitely the Lord's around the corner. Now we're not there. A lot of Christians are ready. Oh, the Lord's coming. Can't wait for the Lord. There's going to be a time that the apostasy of the church is, eh, he ain't come yet. Just do what we want to do. Have what Bible you want to do. Say what you ever want to say. We'll sit around a corner and we'll read a passage of scripture. What do you think it said? What do you think it said? What do you think it said? What do you think it says? My scholarly teachers, my the, the church, the sending church that sends us here, we they all believe. What's the truth? We don't want to hear the truth. What about God? Eh. We're rich. We're wonderful. We're a great pastor. We're a great church. How great we are. As for me also, my eye shall not spare. This is God. And this is the orders he gave to the men. Neither will I have pity. He said that to the men. But I will recompense their way upon their head. You know what God's doing with the women are crying for Tammuz? You know what God's doing for the for the people making for 
the Queen of Heaven. You know what God's doing for the sunrise service people? You know what God's doing for all the altars in Jerusalem? You know what God's doing for all the false god worship in the temple? All the looking to heaven and the Leo and the Virgo. and the, You know what God's doing with them? He's, he's doing exactly what, I was going to say Ezekiel. He's doing exactly what Elijah's doing or did. He says, what's that? Call upon your God, and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Oh, Bill, Bill, come on, cry loud. Maybe he's on the phone. Come on, maybe he's sleeping. Where's your God? That's what, he's, that's what uh, is he, um, Elijah, that's what God's saying. Where is your God protecting you? Your gods have no power over me that is God. And they're dying and they're going straight to hell. And they are in hell today. Imagine a Baptist preacher when God will recompense on his head all the errors of his teaching, all the false doctrine he put forth, and all the false, easy believism he puts on his head at the judgment seat of Christ. How dare you brought into my church Baal? How dare you brought Esther into my church? How dare you brought the birthday of Esther? How dare you treat my prophet that walked into your church, I sent him into your church for correction to teach you the ways of it, and you kicked him out. I'm not talking about just me. I'm talking about all the men that going into perverted churches, going in there and tried to teach right, and they were forced out. You know, God's, God's speaking to the world with all these judgments and, and tornadoes and earthquakes and volcanoes and viruses. What about the what about God who sent that man into your church to say you're doing wrong? Get out of here. That's what Jesus did. He went into and we don't want to hear it. All right, Jesus turned around, and walked out. At one point, at, when the stock market crashed and the pig, the, the, the pig in the pork bellies fell and liquidated their asset, they told Jesus, leave. He said, okay, bye. He got in the boat. And left. What do you think those men that own those pigs are going to have to answer to God one day? Come on, preacher. You think you're doing right and you're not doing right. You're going to, if you're saved, I'm talking about you're saved. I'm not talking about the ones that are lost. You are saved and you are teaching false doctrine. You are leaving people to think they're going to heaven and they're going to die and end up in hell because of a prayer and not belief. That's all going to be on your head. What about all the preachers that go to their preacher fellowship? And they get a bill when they walk out of a hospital that they pay. Hospital. I walk out of a hotel with their bill they pay. What's the bill they pay? They've been watching X-rated movies. The prostitutes that they had come into their room. Listen, I've heard about the preacher. Con I've heard about the prostitutes that show up. Because they know there'll be people that would pay for it. And the X-rated movies they rent. And they hang out at the bar, getting drink, buying drinks for each other at the bar. But the congregation don't know. But the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. And that man gets up in the pulpit and acts holier than now. The recompense upon your head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, I think he's an angel, which had the inkhorn by his side. Reported the man. Hey, there's a reporter of God. There's God's media. Saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Period. <laughs> End of chapter.
the judgments that the Christians will face is not always going to be good and happy. And many Christians are going to have no happiness. Because as much as... Wait a minute, you can't save the world, can you? These are God's people involved in the sins of the world. The worship of Tammuz and the worship of the sunrise service is at the Lord's house. All right, they get up and say, welcome to the Lord's house, and they have the false religion. Maybe that's why they don't like the Old Testament. Maybe it brings conviction, especially Jeremiah chapter 10. When you got a Christmas tree on your piano up on the altar. And a woman getting baptized for the third or fourth time. And we'll never have anybody come in our pulpit, anything but the King James. And when you brought somebody in the pulpit who was not King James, and I challenged it, you asked me to leave. Shall we just print out your message for Wednesday night for everyone just to read? Now, my family knows what I'm talking about. 